XRP and XLM got good news coming up here and have good news in the past. But why is the price down so much compared to the rest of the market? We also have the SEC agreeing to a settlement. This one is going to put one of the big things we've been thinking about to rest. Going to be taking a look at the market and a big time influencer is getting out of one of our favorite coins. Reporting to you live from mom's basement where I don't live in an echo chamber. Shirley ZN says, this shit ain't this shit. We're all tired of this. Our shit country is going to hell in a handbag. This shit because of our Democratic Party. Look at the borders. Look, whoa, 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 okay. Mind Anon says, when did it flip again? No, it, it didn't flip. But February 14th is when automated market makers go live. Clawback goes live. By the way, you cannot claw back XRP. You can claw back items on the chain, right? Tokens issued on the chain. RM says, now that I'm thinking that XRP is 99.9% .9 going to fail, according to Brad Garlinghouse. Digital says, any top dog of a particular crypto gets his personal wallet hacked. How can we trust that underlying crypto itself won't get hacked? I, I don't understand why um, they wouldn't use custody solutions for it. But let's be real. Everyone's getting hacked. Like, everyone is getting hacked. And that's one of the big fears I think a lot of us have is, as money transfers or translates more into the digital space, there's always going to be someone smarter than you out there. And that smarter person, when it comes to finance, programming, hacking, and so forth, the more we move to digital scapes, the more we got to worry about what everyone, yeah, getting hacked. Bitcoin's in at 42.694, E22.92, XRP, 50 cents. About two weeks, you got automated market makers. XLM, the other one we're going to talk about today, 10.9 cents. Now, XLM has protocol 20 going on February 20th. Oh, interesting. Kawinky Dink, I think not. SEC lawsuit ends as Genesis agrees to pay 21 million settlement for the earned product. I don't know if you remember when all this happened, but it all started with the SEC going after companies that were giving you things that yielded something, right? So like if you put say like, you know, 10,000 in this and you were earning four, five, six, seven, 10%, that's an earning product, right? That's an interest yielding product and the SEC considers that a security. Well, one of the big ones was Gemini's earn program okay and guess what they are now settling that the terms of the settlement under the terms of the agreement genesis is obligated to pay 21 million civil penalty to the u.s sec however this payment is contingent on genesis ability to fully reimburse its customers and other creditors as part of its chapter 11 bankruptcy process so now you've got like this weird version of crypto hot potato where genesis right going through all the the bankruptcy stuff they got to still pay the creditors, but the SEC is like, look, look, pay your creditors first, and then we're going to tax you for $21 million. But this all goes back to that crypto hot potato where people don't really have the money that they say they do. So when all of these things go up, right, with the, the Genesis, the Gemini Urn, Celsius, 3AC, like all that kind of stuff, like there's people waiting for money with these bankruptcies because the moment they file for bankruptcy, they get protection and they don't have to worry about their creditors until everything is done. These things can take like a year plus. So you're going to hear a lot more stories like this where you're going to see a lot more settlements, a lot more of this bankruptcy stuff rifle through, which is good because people are going to be getting some of their money. Now, I'm going to share with you a picture, okay? As always, any article you see in this video, along with some other ones, will be linked in the description below. XRP received clarity on July 13th. It pumped over 100% to 94%. Since then, XRP is down 47%. BTC is up 33, ETH up 18, Flare up 70, ADA 42, Sol 249, wow. AVAX 119, Algo 33, and XLM is down 42. So why? Why is it that XRP that got clarity is down since court case action? I mean, seriously, let me know in the comments below. Is this price suppression? Is this people just getting tired of waiting? Is there just too much FUD out there and the FUD machine is working? I mean, seriously, what is it? And, and, and for the XLM crew that's watching too, XLM is down 42%. XLM did not move at all on the announcement of Sorban smart contracts, little protocol 20 action. No, not at all. And which is actually a good thing. I'm going to do a video about that later. It's good that the price didn't tank because they had problems with the smart contract platform. But, but I mean, think about it. Look at this. BTC is up. Did BTC get any clarity from the courts? No. Did Flare? No. Did Sol? No. XRP did, but XRP is down 47%. XLM, which trades along with XRP, right? They have very similar patterns, down 42%.
let's let's keep learning and let's keep reading because a, a lot of people out there want to do the whole echo chamber thing. There's a lot of influences out there that are doubling down and a lot of influences out there that are telling you XRP is the chosen one, bye, 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 okay? But what a lot of these influencers are telling you and showing you is the opposite side of the story. There's people that are bailing and here's why. I'm going to share this with you because I, I'm going to share the three reasons because I want to hear again. Why do you think, right, XRP XLM is down since, you know, some court clarity action? But also, how do you feel about the reasons on why this influencer is selling? Popular influencer says he's selling his XRP for three major reasons. And as always, any article you see in this video, along with all my other ones, are found in mom's basement. No, they're found in the description below. The price of XRP has underperformed relative to major crypto assets in the past few months. I just showed you that. Now we have a Tim Warren who says, guess what? He outlined that XRP was previously viewed as the banker's coin and looked to be setting the rail for the banking system. However, he argued that XRP is already losing this position to other projects like Chainlink, which already boasts a partnership with Swift and institutions managing over 600 billion in assets. He tipped Chainlink to become the real banker's coin, arguing that Link could eventually become the third largest crypto behind BTC and ETH. This is what Warren said directly. As long as we see Chainlink making the convergence in relationship with big institutions that it is doing, it looks like the future of what ties fiat to currencies will have crypto. All right. YouTuber cites Ripple's planned initial public offering as another reason for being bearish on the assets. Precisely, he notes that if Ripple proceeds with the IPO, then it has little reason to protect the price of XRP from decline. And that's actually a big chunk of truth that I think a lot of people miss out. If Ripple were to do the IPO, they would be able to use the IPO to fund their operations. They wouldn't have to use XRP. So then the need to dump XRP just isn't there. They would then focus more on the IPO, on the shares. In fact, he argues that if Ripple had an IPO, then the company would have divided loyalty. It's more likely to favor shareholders over XRP holders. He predicts that anytime the IPO starts to drop, then the company will sell off XRP to keep their business afloat. Recently, Ripple dumped a bunch of XRP and they did a stock buyback on their private shares. So they recently did this. They recently used XRP, converted it into fiat, bought back more of their private shares. So the people that bought into their private share investments, their share prices went up. They went to make them whole. He added the coin could remain at a 50 cent price and Ripple's business could work well as his payments business does not depend on the value of crypto. That is actually very true. XRP does not need to be $1,000 for it to work. It works now, doesn't it? People are using ODL right now, aren't they? People are making transfers on XRPL now, aren't they? See, it works at any price. So they don't need it to go high. Warren provided a final reason, and this ties into the graphic I showed you earlier. Tim Warren provided a final reason why he's long-term bearish on XRP. He cited the company's legal victory against the US SEC last July. According to him, it means that XRP is the only coin that has legal clarity. And that's actually true. It's the only one that the courts have said, look, secondary sales are protected. He asked, why isn't the price doing anything? There is no coin out there that should have a more bullish chart. He believes that for the asset to continue underperforming despite having the best bullish narrative indicates a bleak future. Now, when we go back to the graphic I showed you, okay, and we look at XRP being down 47%, XLM being down 42%, the, the YouTuber there gives actually a bunch of good reasons on why he's bearish. I mean, there's also a few reasons out there to be bullish on XRP, right? But the reason he cites, along with the price being down, is making us wonder what the F is going on. What I have up on the screen right now is the price action of XRP since Taurus. Same thing with XLM right here. That does not look healthy at all, especially when we look at other players in the market like this, especially when people are talking about, oh, XRP is the banker's coin. Well, not really if Link is working with Swift and got a whole bunch of institutions that's actually doing stuff. Link price is also up where XRP price is down. Now, I know some of you out there are going to be like, bro, you're negative, but but bro, what news is positive that's actually real? When, when an influencer comes out and says XRP is going to go to $100, XLM is going to go to $10, that's not news. That's just a price prediction and them things are worthless. You might as well just throw them at the wall and see if they stick because they don't. The real news, though, is when we start looking at the stats, when we start looking at the data, XRP and XLM is down heavily, and there's quite a few reasons why, but I want to know from you what your thoughts are on the reasons why. You know, I don't know how many people watch the 
outro to these videos. But I really do feel bad for the entire XRP and XLM community because, look, put development over here, put everything else over here. We still look at one thing. Why are you in this? You're in this to get juicy price action. And are you getting that juicy price action? People are going to say, oh, bro, you're just you're just cherry picking charts. No, XRP got the clarity with Torres and hasn't done shit price wise. XLM can't get out of its own way. I did a video regarding XLM going to 10 cents about two years ago, over two years ago. And we're still floating around the 10 cent mark, 10.99 right now. Okay. So, yeah, there's a lot of questions being asked. And what bothers me is when you ask these hard questions. The, the maxis in the community out there are like, well, bro, you have to trust the process. Bro, utilization, bro. And like, I keep getting told stuff, but then I look at the price and I'm like, okay, but is any of that mattering? Think of Stellar. Stellar had Sorban, of which was going to be their smart contract platform. Still is. They were going to launch it. It got delayed because they found a bug. They're now going to delay it to February 20th. Do you notice that the market didn't even react one way or another to that price? It was as if the market didn't care, as if the market moved on, as if the news wasn't even news at all. They were like, I don't really give a shit. Price didn't move. You're seeing the same thing with XRP. Go go on go on crypto Twitter. I'm calling it Twitter, not X, all right? Go on crypto Twitter and type in XRP and wait till you see the same narrative point over. Oh, XRP, suppression, XRP, adoption, XRP, to, oh, all the partnerships. Cool. The, the narrative has is, is been the same for years and years and years, and what's the price reflecting? Now look, if you're here to snag some Crypto Web 3 tail, ooh, okay, I get it, I get it. You're here for the juicy goodiness. Maybe you're here for the tech, right? You're Maybe the, you're just a big XRPL player, or you're a big Stellar Chain player, and you're like, yo, the tech is cool, I don't give a crap about the price. But I'm gonna bet that 99.99999% of you out there are here for the price. And since the Torres action, the price has been poopy. I could zoom out even further and the price has been really poopy. So what is it? What gives? We do have more influencers out there bailing on XRP. Support isn't as strong as it used to be. And you're going to say, well, no, you're just being negative. No, if support was better, the price would be better, right? I mean, think of how many people were out there saying, Torres action, dude, you better buy now because you're never going to get this price again. How many influencers said that and now here we are, that happened in July and we're early February and the price is right at where it was when Torres action came out. So just be very careful out there that you don't get swept up in one side or the other. I bring news whether it's good or bad. Good news for XRP is it is still holding its own market cap wise. Good news for XRP, it is fighting right now at 50 cents. Good news for XRP, you got automated market makers coming up. You got clawback coming up. You got liquidity pools coming up. That's all good news. Bad news is the price is not reacting to that. XLM, good news. You got some partnerships. You got some UNHCR stuff. You got some CBDD stuff in the works. You got Sorban smart contracts right around the bend. Those are all good things. But the price isn't reflecting it. Almost as if people have moved on from XRP and XLM because they're centralized and pre-mined. How do you defend centralized, pre-mined, and poor price action and still be a maxi? Well, I know how. I just got to read the comments as soon as I publish the video, of which I'm going to do right now.